It's get season, which means it's time for us to get ready and see what we're going to do in 2020. I had so much fun and made some great connections I get in the past. I had such a fun time when I went to get. I wonder what they're doing this year. I have to find out. Hey, have you heard anything about get? It's such an amazing experience. I need to find out what's up. It's almost time for get. much about the Chester County Economic Development Council? They're the ones that help us promote and put on the whole event in affiliation with the Innovative Technology Action Group and our awesome GET Committee. Anyway, it's the 20th anniversary of GET and we're doing something really cool this year, a whole video series. Hello, my name is Andy and I'm a second year student at the University of Maryland and I'm so excited about the new GET video series. I've had an amazing time every single time I've gone to GET and hands down my most favorite memory has to be an expo where we get to learn about fingerprinting from a detective. My favorite STEM subjects are math, computer science, and engineering and as I'm studying computer science now in college, I plan to use it in the future to do cybersecurity and work on government protection. I'd also love to say a happy 20th anniversary to get, and I'm so excited that you all get to experience it. Does everyone know what GET is? Girls Exploring Tomorrow's Technology is an annual spring event for girls in grades 5 through 10 and their parents to explore career opportunities in a broad scope of STEM-related industries. The program is filled with exciting, enlightening, cool, and experiential activities led by successful women in the STEM fields. Did you know that GET actually started here in Chester County, Pennsylvania in 2001 as a response to the underrepresentation of young women in the computer and technology fields? Since that time, GET has expanded its geographical footprint to include students from all around southeastern Pennsylvania and now showcases the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. And now with a video series, girls everywhere will have a chance to be a part of it. Why don't we just get started now? Let's start with Representative Chrissy Houlihan. Hi everyone, I'm Chrissy Houlihan and I represent our community in Congress. I'm so excited to see so many of you participating in this year's virtual Girls Exploring Tomorrow's Technology event. As I'm sure you can tell, I'm very passionate about encouraging more women and girls and underrepresented minorities to get excited about STEM. As one of the few women engineers in Congress, you can count us on one hand, I think it's so important to have more young women like yourselves pursuing STEM and STEAM interests. Despite making up about half of the global population, women continue to account for only 29% of the science and engineering workforce. In one of my engineering classes, I was just one of 10 women in a lecture of 100 people. That's 10%. And my entire time at studying engineering at Stanford, I had only one female professor. With such small representation, it can be tough for women to imagine themselves as STEM professionals. It's hard to be what you can't see. To address this inequity, I created the Bipartisan Women in STEM and STEAM Caucus to help work towards building a more equal and accessible STEM community for women and girls everywhere. And that's why I'm so proud of all of you for participating in GET 2020, because it shows that we're making progress, that more and more women and girls are getting excited about the possibilities a career in STEM offers, that we are breaking the stereotypes that say STEM careers are only for boys and men, and that our voices and contributions, now more than ever before, are an important part of America's never-ending innovation and evolution. You are the future of STEM, and I can't wait to see all that you will do. Wow, thanks Representative Houlihan. How cool was it that she launched the first ever Women in STEM Caucus in Congress, just to address the lack of women in the STEM community. And I love where she said, it's hard to be what we can't see. 
That's what GET is all about. Successful women in STEM fields and how you can be anything. Hmm. Speaking of other successful women, how many of you remember last year's GET event from NBC 10's Brittany Ship? Well, guess what? We're, she was so excited to be part of last year's GET event that she is now back and ready to share her story. Brittany? Hello everyone, and it's such a pleasure to be here. I'm NBC 10 meteorologist Brittany Shipp. Thank you so much to every single young student who has logged on virtually today to learn and grow and make big plans for your future. I am so thrilled to be a part of Girls Exploring Tomorrow's Technology through the Chester County Economic Development Council. GET is so impactful, and it was so last year that I wanted to come back and talk to you again. What I really enjoyed about GET last year was chatting with all of our future scientists showing off our Storm Force 10 news vehicle and letting students try their hand at broadcast meteorology. I want my message today to focus on blazing your own path and sticking to your dreams and goals, even if you hear no a few times. This was important for me to remember twice, once when I wrote my own book and also once when I had a little dream planted in my heart when I first started out in broadcasting. So let's start with the backstory about how I became a children's book author. While living in San Francisco, I would always come back to visit friends in Philly. And one of the events I loved going to was the African American Children's Book Festival, which happens every February here in Philly. It was there I was inspired to complete an idea I had years before writing my own book. Often we're invited to speak to young students and read a book, but I remember going to bookstores thinking, I don't really like the book choices and I should write my own. Then I had another thought, who am I to write a children's book? I've never done it before. And then the third thought was, who would even buy it? And what if no one likes the idea? Could anyone relate to having feelings like this? But when I started researching, it wasn't just the bookstores I was going to that was lacking diversity in children's literature. In fact, out of 3,400 new children's books each year, only 400 feature a character of color. That's only 11%. And although women make up half of the total workforce, only 29% choose science and engineering careers. So I thought to myself, representation matters and this just isn't right. And when you feel passionately about changing statistics, they can override feelings of insecurity. So it's okay for us as women to have feelings of insecurity, but it's what we do afterwards that really matters. For me, I went forward with my idea to write a book, and this is the book I wish I could have read growing up. I didn't see any meteorologists that looked like me on TV. I didn't have any living in my neighborhood where I grew up and didn't have any really coming to my school, so I guess I really didn't know it was an option. I didn't even realize broadcasting in general was an option until I was 19. I was interning in college at UCLA for the Los Angeles Lakers, and I met a sports reporter who encouraged me to go into TV news, and that really changed the trajectory of my career and my life. So sometimes it's just meeting one person, just a few words of encouragement to really change your life. And I didn't meet that person until 19, but maybe with events like this one, school visits, this book, the seeds will be planted at a younger age. Even if it's not specifically broadcast meteorology, there is an entire video series with opportunities for you to learn about with this Git conference. So I wanted this book to be all about perseverance and also empowerment. I called the book The Meteorologist in Me, and I was specific with the title because I didn't want to dumb down the technical term of meteorologist. You know, meteorologists study the weather and atmosphere. I'm in the studio. That's what I do each day. I was specific with the look of the main character and all the characters in the book so everyone could know scientists and meteorologists look like like you and look like me. And I was really specific with the overall message, which is you can do anything you put your mind to no matter what. That was a positive message I always heard growing up from my parents, and I wanted to make sure every child hears that as well. So I hope this book becomes an inspiring gateway to STEM careers, and if nothing else, just a simple reminder of encouragement. One of the best parts about going to schools is asking if the students learned any lessons from reading this book, and hearing them say, I can do anything I put my mind to is priceless, and it should be repeated often to everyone. And I don't know about you, but I still need to hear it, and maybe more so as we get older, since we start to accept things as well. That's just the way it is. But bottom line is, if you're thinking about trying something new, let me encourage you right now to do it. 
I don't want to take up too much time. I know you're ready to get going, but I will share one more quick story about positive thinking and how it's worked in my life. I started my career in Market 167 in Yuma, Arizona, with a population of about 100,000 people, working for an NBC affiliate back in 2007. I used to do the weather cut-ins locally after Al Roker of the Today Show delivers the weather from New York. Now, cut-ins are when we give the local forecast within the national show. So Al Roker always says, here's a peek outside your window, and that's the cue for the local stations to deliver their forecast. So I'm in this tiny cubicle living in a city that doesn't even have a mall. Well, I think they have one now. But I used to joke with my coworker, one day when I'm filling in nationally in New York, I'm gonna come up with my own tagline. Maybe I'll say, here's what's going down in your town. And we laughed about it knowing the chances are not impossible, but really slim to work on the national broadcast. So my goal was pushed to the back burner when I moved to Phoenix. I was working for an independent station. It wasn't an NBC station, which means no more cut-ins with Al Rokers for about five years. But then I came to NBC 10 in Philly in 2012. And by 2014, I was called to fill in on the national show early today in New York. During this particular show, it was now my responsibility to toss to all the local affiliates across the nation, including Yuma. And I hear the producer in my ear and he's giving me instructions and he says, coming up in the next segment, you're going to be the one tossing to the weather. You can say anything you want. We just ask that you don't say, here's a peek outside your window because Al Roker says that. Do you have an idea of what you want to say? And I casually say, of course, as if this moment hadn't been 10 years in the making. I said, well, what if I say, Here's what's going down in your town. And he said, I love it. That works. So I didn't know I was going to get from market, how I was going to get from market 167 in Yuma to a national appearance in New York, but it happened. I thought it could happen. I was positive about it. And so that's what happened. And so this is why the message in the book is so important. So do you want to say it with me? You can do anything you put your mind to, no matter what. I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe in you. You are the future. You are our young minds that will change our world. See you on TV. Thank you. Did you hear all that? Blaze your own path. Stick to your dreams and goals, even if you hear a no. And you can do anything you put your mind to, no matter what. These are great messages and something to remember as you go to school. As you get involved with organizations, sports, volunteering, really as you live your life. So earlier I mentioned the Get 20th Anniversary video series. Great news, we have re-engineered Get into a video series that starts with today's opening ceremony and will be followed by a weekly video or live stream with hands-on STEM activities from our expo organizations. This program, this programming will run throughout the school year. So instead of just one day, it will take place over eight months. Watch your email for weekly video links. And AGI will be back again in December with a cool live stream event. So along with some previous GET attendees, let's hear it for GET's 20th anniversary video series. You can